I don't know about you, but my long range game has been weak for a while because long range stuff, it takes a lot of time. It takes specific ranges or a lot of land. So you can go out there and really dial those skills in. And I just haven't been keeping up on it. A buddy of mine reached out to me and he wanted to go hunting down in Ajo, do a coyote hunt. So I went ahead and I threw this Crimson Trace Hardline 6 to 24 on that Springfield Waypoint 2020 bolt gun. Went out there, got it zeroed up, and had some fun with it. Like it's literally where the seam of the two targets is. If you if you were to walk straight down this little band, uh -huh. keep walking through your twelve. Got him. You rolled him. A huge shout out to Mike Borden from After Action AZ for doing that video. He went down there and had some fun with us. He's a videographer, photographer. So follow him at After Act on pretty much all social media. So before we get into the Hardline Pro, Another big shout out to Flatline Fiber. They make everything from these sweet padded slings, which I used for that hunt, ear pro wraps and other items like dump pouches. Most of it's berry compliant, made in the USA, really good people, really good stuff. Check them out at flatlinefiber.com and you can use code TC10, get yourself 10% off. All right, so the Hardline Pro 6 to 24, first focal plane with illuminated reticle here. Ton of fun on this. It's on that Waypoint 2020 rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor, which is an absolute tack driver. I will have a review on that thing soon. Its capabilities are far beyond me. Let's get into the specs of this and talk about what this scope offers, brings to the market, and kind of how I feel about it now that I've had it on this thing for a couple months and I've had some chances to actually get it out there on a hunt and see how it works. This Hardline Pro is a 6 to 24 when it comes to the magnification. It has an illuminated MOA reticle in its first focal plane. It is made of aerospace aluminum and has an eye relief of 3.6 to four inches and an objective lens diameter of 50 millimeters. The tube diameter overall is 30 millimeters and the adjustments on this thing are going to be quarter MOA on those exposed turrets. They say that it transmits approximately 90% of light, which is definitely pretty good. And overall, it's 3.7 inches by 3.1 inches by 15.6 inches and weighs 26.46 ounces. The end lens is green multi-coated. It's going to help keep down the glare, help uh, illuminate that dot. And it's overall pretty clear glass. You're going to have 60 MOA of adjustment, both windage and elevation. And it is side parallax adjustable with zero stop turrets. You're gonna have a field of view maximum of 17.9 feet and a minimum field of view at max magnification of 4.7 feet. So it's gonna give you what you need to get done out there on the range. And it is covered by their lifetime warranty. According to Crimson Trace, this has been tested in extreme temperatures from low to high, thermal cycling, vibration testing, drop testing, pretty much everything we would expect. And of course, immersion tested should you be somebody that hunts out there in more inclement weather. It's been nitrogen purged, it's shock resistant, and it's pretty much gonna be ready for most things you're gonna throw at it. All right, so those are the basic specs on this. And like I said, a buddy of mine called me up, he's another ex-Ranger guy, was in 2nd Battalion, and he was also with Groot, wanted to go down on a coyote hunt. So we got this thing zeroed up on that rifle, took it out there, and I went out to about 350-ish yards. We didn't have a rangefinder with us, or at least I didn't, and he was calling it, and being that his nickname when he was still in Group was Plinker, 
and it's not because he missed, so I'll give you one guess why his nickname was that. I pretty much trusted his range estimations. And in all reality, once I used the holdover on that very easy to use reticle in there, it lined up with pretty much exactly what he told me. It did take me a couple of shots, took me two to get in there, because at first I wasn't accounting right for my holdover because I'm rusty. It's been a while. So I, it took me two shots to get that one, but we reached out there a little bit. So really curious to know, what is your personal best? Because 350 for me on something the size of a very small coyote, it's not too bad, but again, I'm out of practice and I haven't been doing a lot of long range. Short. Fuck. And one of his buddies out there, Charlie, actually had a 22 Creedmoor. He was a 82nd Airborne QRF guy for a long time. That 22 Creedmoor was a pretty crazy round. As we were shooting steel out there on the range, it actually flipped a plate around on itself where the 6.5 Creedmoor didn't do that. So if you've got experience with that 22 Creedmoor, I really want to know because that was a pretty exciting round. Well, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things I like about this and some of the other things that it does come with. So it is going to come with some basic covers, you know, those kind of bungee retention covers that a lot of optics come with. You're going to get a sunshade and overall that's really it. You're going to get a wrench to use your turrets with and then of course the instruction manual and the box. So nothing crazy there. But overall, the glass on this is very good. And I'll throw in a photo right here so you guys can kind of see the clarity of this when it's looking at a target while we were doing zero. I was pretty impressed with the overall clarity of not only the glass, but the reticle and the fact that it didn't kind of hew out on the edges. The eye relief was pretty good. There's some, uh, some scopes out there with better, some scopes out there with worse. And again, let me know if you guys have some really nice stuff that's in a, you know, a nice category for all of us to afford. I'm curious to know what you're all running out there. When it comes to that first focal plane, if you don't know the difference between first and second focal plane, first focal plane, that reticle is going to grow as the magnification grows in itself. Whereas the second focal plane is gonna stay the same size the entire time. And how I remember that is first is fancy. It grows and second is simple. It stays the same the whole time. A few more of the cool things on this, it is parallax adjustable. So if you know how to adjust for parallax, you can do that. It is not fixed like a lot of other scopes out there. The texture or serrations when it comes to not only the magnification ring, but the turrets themselves it is very aggressive, but not sharp or overly kind of uh, disturbing to your finger, I guess you could say. Uh, now, when it comes to the turrets and working them themselves, they have a very nice positive feeling to them when they click into that next quarter MOA. And then of course, just make sure you return to zero on them. And if you need that illumination or you like to use illumination on your reticle, this one's capable of that. You've got 10 settings on there. And between each setting of brightness, you have an off position. So if you know your light environment you're going into, you can preset that on the optic. And that way, when you're out there, you can go between maybe one up, one down, or right in the middle for off. If you know, say you want six or seven, and then the one in the middle is off. So that's pretty cool. I love seeing that on LPVOs and scopes because it helps you out. So you don't have to spin that dial all the way back down or around if you just need a quick adjustment in brightness. So the MSRP on the Hardline Pro in the 6 to 24, I think it was like right at like a gram, but I easily found it online for like 739 or 740. And I will put links to the build list if you're interested, you can check that out. So overall, not bad for everything you're getting. And we have just a ton of options. I mean, it really is a great time to be in the market for something like this because you can get a lot for your money, but then at the same time, you got a lot of choices. So it might take you a little time to figure out exactly what you want, what you like, and what you actually need. You may not need that much magnification, or you may need a little bit more if you're super dialed in on the long range. So if I had to nitpick and change one thing on this because I've been spoiled by some others, it would be that they have the kind of locking turrets or the pop-up turrets. So that way, when you make your adjustment, you can lock it back down and you know you're good to go and you're not gonna accidentally bump it. That also helps when you are in transport or say you're out there walking around, getting ready to go to your hide or something and your equipment, it could turn one of those turrets and that could throw you off a little bit with those ones that kind of pop up and then lock back down so they can't be adjusted if you hit them with a piece of gear or something. That's just kind of a nice feature. And I know that may be asking a lot in this price point, but like I said, a couple other optics I have have that and that kind of spoils you a little bit once you have those because I tend to throw things around and I tend to knock things over a lot when I'm out there testing them. So yeah, it's just something I kind of like. Well, that is what I've got for you guys today. It is just another option. And we seem to just have endless options with all the choices this day, which I am definitely a huge fan of. But I'm curious to know your thoughts on what you think about the specs on this. Because overall, I had a really good time with it. I think it's a solid optic for the price point on there. 
If you're interested in anything you guys saw here today, you can check out the links at the blog post or the build list. That will be the first link down below and the first link pinned in the comments. Thank you to my Patreons. You guys supported the ammo on this one along with True Shot Gun Club. They helped out with a lot of that 6.5 ammo because it's about $2.45 a shot right now for that stuff. So make sure you guys get subscribed, give you a like, and let me know your comments below on what you think one way or the other. And of course, your personal best. I'm really curious to know how far you guys have gone out there, both just on the range and for your hunts. Get out there on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you guys on the next one.